On December 20th of 2010, we were able to see a total eclipse of the moon. Now, I love both photography and astronomy, so of course I had to get photos of this. Uh, now, the moon doesn't cover much space in the sky, a su surprisingly small amount, and it's only about half a degree. Uh, if you hold your pinky finger out at arm's length, that covers more than half a degree. You can cover the moon with your pinky finger held at arm's length. So that's not very big. And so if you want details of the moon in a photo, you need the tightest field of view you can get. Now, for me, that means using this Canon 70 to 200 lens out at 200 millimeters. It means using this Canon 40D, which has a 1.6 crop factor, and using this 1.4 times extender. So again, this is just the equipment I have. If you have like an 800 millimeter lens, you're going to do better. So with this equipment, the, the uh, moon looks like this. So as you can see, you can get some nice detail. And it covers a decent amount of the frame. Now being a lover of astronomy, I of course have a telescope. And so let's see how we can use this to help us take a shot of the moon. This is a Celestron Nexstar 4 Maxidov Cassegrain Telescope. Now it looks really small, but that's because it uses mirrors. Now the front element here, light comes in. There's a mirror at the back, shaped like a bowl, which focuses light back to the front, where there's a small mirror, which bounces the light back to the back, where there's another mirror that reflects it up to this uh, eyepiece place. And that's how we can look at whatever we want in the sky. Now, how do we take, and in this case, this is a 5D Mark II, how do we take this? to connect it to there. Fortunately, it's easy. And that's using this. This is something from a company called Scoptronics. It is a camera adapter for a telescope. It has a one and an eighth inch flange for the eyepiece on the one, one end, and it has a Canon bayonet mount on the other. Now this costs about 90 US dollars, so not too bad even though it's a piece of really well machined aluminum. So that's really nice. So what you do is you mount the bayonet mount onto your camera like that. Then you just mount that into your telescope. And now you're ready for astrophotography. Now with this setup, and remember, the 5D Mark II is a full frame, full 35 millimeter sensor. And so this is what the moon looks like with this setup. And as you can see, the moon fills much more of the frame with this setup, even though this is a full frame sensor. It's almost filling the frame with the moon. So we're getting lots of detail. This telescope also includes a tracking mechanism. In other words, there's a horizontal motor in the base and a vertical motor to control the azimuth in the uh, on the side of the telescope tube and it has a tracking controller. Now this isn't that expensive a telescope and so the tracking is a little bit dodgy. It Even when you set this up objects tend to drift a little bit so I normally don't set it up. Now one of the nice things about using a telescope like this which is a reflector as opposed to using a refractor telescope like uh, Galileo used or that you might find at a department store, is control over chromatic aberration. Now, it's something photographers have to deal with since we're dealing with lenses. And lenses can cause chromatic aberration because they bend different, lenses bend different frequencies of light at different angles. So you end up with little blue or red fringes around the edges of sharp objects. Mirrors don't have that problem. Now, whether you're dealing with a Newtonian reflector, a Schmidt Cassegrain telescope, or one like this, a Maxidov Cassegrain telescope. Since you're only dealing with mirrors, there's very little chromatic aberration. You have a mirror here, another mirror here, another mirror bouncing off into the camera, and this adapter has no lenses. It's just a straight shot through. 
so there's no lenses all the way to the sensor. Now you can still end up with chromatic aberration just from uh, uh, spillage from one photo site to the next uh, on the sensor itself, but it's really minimal. So reflector telescopes are really great for this kind of thing. Now I used my Canon 40D uh, with a 1.6 crop factor sensor as in this demonstration, but in actuality, I'd be better served using a 5D Mark II, even using my 70 to 200 and 1.4 times extender. Reason is, now a lot of uh, experienced photographers say that using a crop factor camera makes your telephotos more powerful. I know what they mean, but I think it's a confusing way to say it for beginners you know, to photography. All a crop factor camera, or all a crop frame camera does is reduce your field of view. Now, if my Canon 40D has a 10.1 megapixel, 1.6 times crop factor sensor. My 5D Mark II has a full frame, 21 megapixel sensor. So if I use the 72-200 lens at 200 millimeters and the 1.4 times extender on my 5D Mark II, and then I in post cropped it, the resulting image by 1.6 times, I'd still end up with 13.1, or a little over 13 megapixels. That's compared to my 40D, which would only have 10 megapixels. So I would still be better served using my 5D Mark II, even with my uh, 200 millimeter lens setup, um, than using the 40D, uh, because all of my 40D is doing is reducing the field of view. So of course, people say megapixels don't matter. Yeah. So that's how I set up my shot to the moon, and I hope that helps. This setup works with any telescope that has a one and an eighth inch uh, eyepiece, and so give it a try. Mm -hmm.